previous video, I had shown that Big Bang and Einstein's general theory of relativity points towards the origin of the universe. However, one of the objections to this claims come from Stephen Hawking's work on quantum cosmology. Quantum cosmology is the attempt in theoretical physics to develop a quantum theory of the universe. This approach attempts to answer open questions of classical physical cosmology, particularly those related to the first phases of the universe. In quantum cosmology, you have the light cone of the expanding universe stretching out and inside the tiny little fraction of time corresponding to a point in time when the universe was compressed together and was so small that it could be described by quantum mechanics. It is inside that tiny point of time it is possible that a deterministic understanding of physics would break down. Thus, a classical theory of general relativity could not be applied in that domain. This is the claim of some quantum cosmologists. Well, first of all, not everyone accepts that interpretation of quantum mechanics. Peter Hutzel, for example, disputes the idea that determinism breaks down even in that microscopic realm. It takes the uncertainty principle to be a principle of epistemological uncertainty and not a true indeterminism. But if you do take the most standard, more popular quantum interpretations, then you get idea that inside Planck time, all that exists is what's called the universal wave function. The wave function which is represented by psi is derived from the Schrodinger equation. The wave function describes all the possible states that could exist for the matter to exist in. Now, inside that plan time, the idea is that there is no matter, it's just energy or just the wave function, depending upon which quantum cosmology you take. The wave function that defines all the possible physical states, that is to say, all the possible physical universes that could pop out of that initial strange state. So the idea of quantum cosmology is a way around the cosmological singularity. That is to say that this universal wave function could have self-existed from eternity past. So an actual infinite universe in a sense. This will eliminate the need to a transcendent God as a cause of the universe. Stephen Hawking, taking the many world quantum cosmology approach, says that every possible state described by the wave function exists in some possible worlds. That, however, does not give a satisfying answer to why our universe is the way it is. So he uses a mathematical device that Simon pioneered called the sum over histories. He tries to sum all the possible histories of all the possible states that the wave function could generate to show that ours is the most likely universe. Or in other words, he wants to add together all the superpositions of all the possible states in order to calculate the most probable states that could emerge from this wave function, the universe as a wave function. Now when he does that, he finds that he cannot solve the mathematical problems that he is faced with in trying to perform this operation without what are called complex variables, the mathematics of imaginary time. So every time there is a time variable, he has to replace it with the device of imaginary time. And when he does this, he performs a mathematical transformation, analyzes the universe as a wave function in the mathematical domain of imaginary numbers, and he finds when he does this, the time t is equal to zero singularity disappears. It goes away in the mathematical representation of the universe. So he makes quite a lot out of this. He says that, in fact, as long as the universe had a beginning, we suppose that it had a creator. But if the universe is completely self-contained, having no boundary or edge, it would neither have a beginning nor end. It would simply be, what place then for a creator? Now you may still need a creator for reasons other than the temporal beginning, as I will explain in the second part of this video. But let's get back to Stephen Hawking's argument for now. There is a problem with this argument, because he wants to turn around and apply this conclusion to the real world. The problem is that when he transforms the mathematical descriptions back into the real domain, the domain of real numbers, the singularity reappears. Now this is a severe problem. He is making an application to the real world of a domain of mathematics which specifically does not apply. It has to be transformed back into the real world before you can make any ontological claim about this world. And that's really the difficulty that he faces. He admits this. He says when we go back to the real time in which we live, however, there will still appear to be singularity, indeed the temporal singularity. This means that in the real world, the singularity still exists, pointing towards the beginning of the universe and a need for a transcendent cause. In the second part of this video, we will examine whether God or multiverse, which provides a better explanation for the fine-tuning of the universe.